Praise God. Jeremiah chapter 17. I want to see what Jeremiah has to say about the Lord tonight. We read this verse in our preaching last week and it's between Psalms 114 and Jeremiah 17, 14. I've stayed, I've stayed tore up all week. The Lord just dealt with me on these two thoughts. And I want to share with you what the Lord has laid upon my heart. Share part of it this morning about being in the presence of the Lord. Anybody ready to leave Egypt? Amen. Begin to praise and magnify God. Judah is his Judah is praise, and Judah will be his sanctuary. He inhabits the praise of his people. Where praise is at, yes. that's where he's going to be. Yes. We want to praise our Lord. Jeremiah 17, 14 tonight, simply stated, Jeremiah said, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For thou art my Praise. Pretty simple words by Jeremiah. His devotion, his dedication, his commitment to God made him say these words. He said, if I'm going to be healed, Lord, it's going to be because you healed me. If I'm going to be saved, it's going to be because you saved me. For thou art my praise. I want to preach a simple thought tonight. You are my praise. You are my praise. Stretch your hand towards heaven tonight. Let's ask God. To touch us tonight. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful to you tonight for your presence. We're so thankful for the hope that we have in you, for the peace that we have in you, for the joy that you brought us, dear God, on that day of salvation, dear God. So thankful tonight that we no longer walk in Egyptian bondage, Lord. We're no longer bound by the things of this world, but we've been set free. Lord, as Brother Joe said tonight, that we found you and your saving grace and your mercy and your love, dear God. And I'm so thankful tonight, dear God, that you have touched us and, and helped us and moved in our hearts and our lives, dear God. And I'm just so thankful tonight that you're still saving souls, still changing lives, still healing sick bodies, still redeeming, still ministering in our hearts and our lives. We're so grateful to you tonight for your blessings, for the joy, for the peace that you bring. We give you all praise, honor, and glory for what's going to be accomplished here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Verse 12 says, A glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed. And they that depart from me shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken the Lord, the foundation of living waters. And in our text, he says, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Uh, save me, and I shall be saved, uh, for thou art my praise. Uh, then verse 15, he said, Behold, they say unto me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. As for me, I have not hastened from being a pastor uh, to follow thee. Neither have I desired the woeful day. Uh, thou knowest that which come out of my lips was right before thee. Uh, he was telling the Lord, here there's a lot of things that surround me. Uh, there's a lot of people that's not living for you. There's a lot of people that's not doing right. Uh, he said, Lord, you brought me to preach to these people. Uh, Jeremiah began to get so frustrated in his day. Uh, this, this prophet was known as the weeping prophet. Because he spent many hours weeping over the children of Israel. He was spent many hours weeping over the people of God. Brother Carl, proclaiming to them what the Lord had laid so heavy upon his heart. He proclaimed to them this very thought that's been thrown out here in Jeremiah 17 and 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, O Lord, and I shall be saved. Jeremiah's message was the only help that we have is in the Lord. The only way uh, is you're going to find deliverance. The only way uh, is you're going to find healing. The only way uh, is you're going to find salvation uh, is through the Lord. Uh, he began to tell them time and time again. Uh, he said, I told them, Lord, that they wouldn't hear. Uh, I proclaimed to them that they wouldn't hearken uh, unto my words. Uh, it's the very next chapter that Jeremiah says, the Lord sent me down to the potter's house. Uh, and I watched as he wrote that great work uh, upon that potter's wheel. Uh, he said, I watched this as it unfolded, uh, and the Lord began to speak to Jeremiah, uh, and he began to tell him that the people, the children of Israel, uh, are like that clay. I'm the potter. Uh, they're the clay. Church tonight, uh, he's the potter. Uh, we're the clay. If we're going to be molded, if we're going to be made uh, into his likeness, into a perfect 
me into what God has us to be. If this body is going to be restored, it's just what Jeremiah said. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, O Lord, and I shall be saved. But if the Lord does not do it, it will not be done. He said, if the Lord does not do it, it shall not be done. Another writer said, He that built the house, and the Lord is not the builder of that house, that house is built in vain. Uh, many people today uh, are proclaiming a healing that God has not given. Uh, they're proclaiming a salvation that God has not brought. Uh, the only way, as we said this morning through John 14 and 6, uh, is through Jesus Christ. Uh, the only way that they've got salvation is if they knelt down an altar uh, and proclaimed that blood that was shed for them at Calvary. Uh, Claim that cleansing flow, what He did on the cross uh, of Calvary for you and me. Uh, that's the only way that we're going to to make it today. Uh, the only way that we're going to be healed today. Uh, he said, well, if you're sick, is there any sick among you? Uh, call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint them and pray for them. Uh, but he does not tell them that the oil will heal them. Uh, he does not tell us uh, that Brother Jamie laying hands on you uh, is going to heal you. I can't heal nobody. Uh, I don't have any healing uh, in me, in my hands. Uh, there's no healing in my touch. Uh, but at that point of contact, uh, if we're going to be healed, uh, Guess what? It's not going to be because some preacher blew on you. It's not going to be because some preacher swung his coat at you or pushed you down. It's going to be because the presence of the Lord came down and met with you right there. It was him that bore the stripes at Calvary. It wasn't me. It was the power of God unto salvation. And he bore every stripe for you and me. Jeremiah said, Heal me, O Lord, and I'll be healed. Save me, and I'll be saved. Little did Jeremiah know there was coming a day that he was going to have to cry out to the Lord and he was going to have to stand up for that. How many know today that when we proclaim something for the Lord, we better be ready to stand up behind Him. We better be able to be able to be to the point that we're ready to put teeth to it. When we begin to make proclamations, Jeremiah found this out uh, real quick, and we'll find this real quick in our walk. Uh, but I want us to look tonight at Psalms 150, what it says. Uh, as Jeremiah finished his statement, he said, uh, that, that if I'm healed, it's going to be because you healed me. If I'm saved, uh, I'm healed, it's because you saved me. Uh, he said, for you are my praise. He said, you're my praise. You're the reason that I glorify. You're the reason I magnify. You're the reason I keep preaching to a people that's not listening to me. You're the reason I keep proclaiming what all these people do. They don't lift me up. They don't edify. They just make me weep. I just weep over the hardness of their heart. I just weep over their stiff neckness. I just weep over the fact that it seems like they got their fingers in their ears. But he said, Lord, no matter. You are my praise. You're the reason that I do it. You're the reason I keep proclaiming it. You're the reason I keep shouting it out. You're the reason that I keep doing it because you are my praise. Psalms 150 tells us, praise ye the Lord. That's what first, the first verse starts out by saying, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Uh, praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Uh, praise Him with the psaltery and harp. Uh, praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Uh, praise Him with the stringed instruments and organs. Uh, praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Uh, praise Him upon the high sounding cymbals. Uh, let everything that hath breath uh, praise the Lord. And then He ended with the same way that He started it. Uh, praise ye the Lord. Uh, if anybody needs the King James to be brought into the modern version for you, uh, that ye there means you. It says praise uh, you the Lord. Uh, you praise the Lord. Uh, don't wait for somebody else to praise the Lord. Uh, don't wait for somebody else to lift their hand uh, and say God is good to me. Uh, if he's your praise, you're going to praise him. Uh, if he's your everything, uh, you're not going to look around to see if anybody else is going to stand up uh, with the choir singing. Uh, you're going to go wait to see if somebody else is going to stand up uh, and begin to give him praise uh, in the middle of that special uh, or right in the middle of the sermon. Just begin to lift your hands. Uh, begin to clap your hands, uh, begin to magnify him. Uh, but Jeremiah said, I don't have no problem with it uh, because I know that he is my praise. Amen. He's my praise. I'll praise him in the sanctuary. I'll praise him in Walmart. I'll praise him in work. Uh, I'll praise him driving down the road. Uh, I'll praise him walking across the yard. Uh, I'll praise him while I'm mowing the grass. Uh, I'll praise him while I'm working. Uh, I'll praise him whenever I feel like it. Uh, 
because He is my praise. I don't even praise Him when I don't feel like it because He is my praise. He is my all and my all and my everything. Psalm has said it so wonderfully here. He wanted us to get the point because He started the chapter and He ended the chapter with the same thing. Praise ye the Lord. Church, if we could get that, if we could get a hold of that, I could say amen right now and never have to preach again if we could just get a hold of that. Yeah. But we're not going to get a hold of it. Everybody's not going to get a hold of that, so I'm going to have to preach again and again and again. Because we can't seem to grasp what the Word of God is speaking to us. He said here that praise the Lord. I mean, praise Him in the sanctuary. Praise Him on all those instruments. Uh, praise Him in everything that you do. Uh, but then He ended with this. Everything that has breath. Uh, praise Him. Oh, man, that don't leave any of us out. Uh, because if we're sitting here, if we're still in existence, uh, if, if you're not, uh, I don't see any casket up here in front of the church tonight. Nobody's laying in it. That means every one of us has breath. Uh, so He said, let everything uh, that has breath uh, praise uh, ye the Lord. Well, Brother Jerry, I don't feel good. He didn't say it felt good. He said, okay, praise the Lord. Oh, brother, Jim, it's been a rough week. You don't know what I've gone through. It's like I told you this morning. He inhabits the praise of his people. And when his presence begins to fill that temple, all of a sudden troubles will vanish. All of a sudden pains will ease. All of a sudden heartache will be ended. And how do we make that happen? How do we see that happen? When we begin to do as Jeremiah said, say, Lord, you are my praise. You are my praise. I glorify you. I magnify you. I praise you. Not because everything's going the way I want it to go, but because you are my praise. You are my all and my all, and you are my everything. See, Jeremiah was facing a pretty decent time in his life. At this time, when he said, Lord, heal me and I'll be healed. Save me and I'll be saved. For you are my praise. Everything was all right. Everything was all right. Jeremiah came to a place. They took him. They laid him in down, lowered him down in the pit. They said, Jeremiah, we've heard about enough from you. And they began to bring him into captivity. And they began to lower him down to that bog and that fire. They began to put him there. And he began to uh, be in bondage for proclaiming uh, what God told him to proclaim. Uh, how many knows tonight that it's not going to always be popular uh, when we're praising our God? Uh, it's not going to always be popular when we speak up for the Lord. Uh, when we take a stand for Him. When we dare to be different in a world of compromise. Uh, you know who's going to hate us the most? It's not the world. Uh, but it's the religious crowd. Uh, it wasn't the world that hung Jesus on the cross. It was the religious crowd that hung Him on the cross. It wasn't the world that stopped their ears when Stephen was preaching. It was the religious crowd that stopped their ears when He was preaching because they said, we don't want to hear that. That's not what we want to hear. That's not what tickles our fancy. That's not what we think it's to be. It don't really matter what we think. It don't really matter what the religious crowd wants. It's what thus said the Word of God. Jeremiah said, I don't care what you want to hear. I I know what the Lord spoke to me. I know what He had to say to me. And I've got to proclaim it. And He did. And He ended up in bondage. He ended up in a place that He was about to pay for. It. Listen, same man that said, Heal me, O Lord, and I'll be healed. Save me, O Lord, and I'll be saved. You are my praise. Listen to what He's saying now. Jeremiah 20 and verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of Him, nor speak any more. In his name. It took Jeremiah a little while to get from that mountain top to that valley where he was saying, I've heard people say, Man, the Lord my praise on Sunday morning by Sunday night. Oh, I'll never I'll never go to church again. I'll never worship him again. This is what is coming. Well, Jeremiah was at that place when he said, I will not make mention of him, uh, nor speak any more in his name. Uh, this same man that said, Lord, hear my praise. Uh, what happened to Jeremiah? What happened to this man of God? What happened to this prophet of God? Uh, he took the time like you and I do to start looking around. Uh, he started beginning to get to a place that he began to have a pity party. Uh, he began to look, hey, nobody's listening to me. Uh, he wanted somebody to say, poor Jeremiah. Yeah. That's what he wanted. 
There's sometimes that Brother Jamie and others of you, if you'll be honest, you just want somebody to come up and pat you on the back and say, poor Jamie, it'll be all right. Nobody's listening to you. It'll, it'll be okay, son. But nobody was listening to him. And not only were they not listening to him, now he's putting bondage because of it. And he said, look what it's got me. No doubt there was a devil. He showed up. Word of God doesn't tell us that the devil showed up. But this man of God to get to this place, no doubt the devil was talking. If the devil doesn't always show up and sell that flesh, to talk for itself. Uh, when we allow ourselves to get in flesh and get in carnal nature uh, and begin to look around at fleshly things, uh, the devil doesn't have to do anything. He can sit over in the corner somewhere uh, and just watch us implode within ourselves. Uh, watch us uh, discourage ourselves. David said, encourage yourself in the Lord. David told us that we must uh, exalt one another and lift ourselves up. He said, you better encourage yourself in the Lord. Well, Jeremiah began to look he was in that pit and all he could see was darkness. He'd open his eyes and it was dark. Close his eyes and it was dark. Peel that mug and that mire and he was in. He just said, man, is it even worth it? Is it even worth it? Anybody ever been there? I'll be honest with yourself. There's some of you, you're there right now. There's some of you tonight, you're there right now. He said, oh, I don't even know if it's worth it. I don't even know if it's worth it. It's, it's what thought that came to his mind. But let's not uh, be mistaken. Jeremiah did not stay in this state very long. Matter of fact, this isn't even a whole verse that Jeremiah stays this way. Uh, but this lets us know that we are all flesh and blood. Uh, this lets us know of the mercies and the grace of God. That we're all going to face times uh, of questioning. We're all going to face times uh, when we feel like throwing up our hands and quitting. Uh, we're all going to face times when we begin to think, uh, would it be better for me just to fold my arms? in my lip uh, and just not do it anymore. Uh, there's so many times uh, that we want to do that uh, but we have to say uh, with the men and women of God that's been through this in the past and overcame it, I will not quit now. Uh, I will not stop now. Uh, the only way that it's going to be over for me, uh, I've said many times, it's not over yet. Uh, I will know that it's over, Sister Pat, when I feel uh, streets of gold up underneath my bare feet. Uh, I will know it's over when I look up and see walls of Jasper uh, and gates of pearl. I'll know it's over when I see the face of my Jesus and I run. Brother Red fall down at his feet and cry holy unto him. Then and only then will it be over. Until that time, we must be like that song we sung tonight. Keep on the firing line. Make up our mind. Lord, you're my praise. You're my all and my all. If I'm going to be healed, if I'm going to be saved more than ever before, Jeremiah needed to recall his own words. Here I am in this pit, Lord. The only way I'm going to be saved is if you save me. But he didn't say that. He said, I will not make mention of him nor speak anymore in his name. That's what he said. But then, very next statement. But his word was in my heart. But his word was in my heart. That's the importance of getting God's word in you. That's the importance of daily Bible study, daily, daily devotion. That's the importance of being in the house of God. David said, Thy word have I hid my heart that I may not sin against thee. Now, Jeremiah said that his word uh, was in my heart. God had spoken to me, uh, and I knew uh, it was the voice of the Lord. How did he know it was the voice of the Lord? Because he said, uh, He is my praise. Uh, that wasn't just a statement that he made. Uh, that's not just something this prophet said uh, because it sounded good. Uh, we don't stand in this pulpit and proclaim stuff. Uh, hey, that'll sound good. I think I'll say that tonight. Uh, oh, that'll really move the people. There's some that's guilty of that. They get cliches and quotes. Uh, it's something that they think will move the people. But Jeremiah wasn't about trying to move the people, trying to move their emotions and say, man, this will be a catchy phrase that will get them. He wasn't talking to people. He was talking to God. And he said, heal me and I shall be healed. Save me and I shall be saved because you are my praise. But he said, I got into a place, church. He said, I got into a place and I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak anymore in his name. I will not do it. I've been there. Brother Carl, I've been there. He said, I'm not preaching anymore. I'm not going to preach anymore. I'm not, I can't sing anyway. I'm not going to sing anymore. I'm not going to go to church anymore. I, I'm not going to teach them, them children in Sunday school anymore. I'm not teaching anymore. They don't even listen to me anyway. We've been there. 
If we allow Satan to, and we'll allow this flesh to, it will convince us. Uh, he will convince us that this life is not the life worth living. Uh, but we better be reminded uh, that it's not about us. It's not about our circumstances, how good we have it or how bad we have it. Uh, it does not matter if we're on the mountaintop uh, or in the valley. It does not matter uh, if we're neck deep in the muck uh, or if we're standing there shouting the victory. Uh, he still has to be our praise. Uh, he still inhabits the praise of his people. He's looking for somebody to say, hey, uh, this arm sl let the, is slung down here beside me. I can't even lift it up. I, I can't do anything with it. Uh, this arm don't have any strength in it whatsoever uh, and I can't lift it up. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to take this arm uh, and lift this arm yeah. up uh, and say, I'm going to praise the Lord. Uh, I'm going to walk by him. Uh, I'm going to magnify him. Uh, all these legs that are in so much pain. Uh, I barely got in here today and I can't just, uh, I can't even hardly go. But I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab myself by the neck of the neck, pull myself up and say, Lord, these knees aren't my praise. These legs aren't my praise. These aches aren't my praise. You're my praise. I may be here, Jeremiah, setting this spark and this clay and my mind saying, my flesh is saying, don't preach anymore. Preaching's what got you here. Don't stand anymore. Standing's what got you here. Come on, church, you've been there. You've been to that same place. And Jeremiah said, no, 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 do it. I'm not going to do it anymore. But then he said, but aren't you so glad for that three-letter word, but? Not the four-letter word, but, but the three-letter word, but. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. But his word was in my heart like a fire shut up in my bones. Jeremiah said, what was that fire burning, Brother Wayne? It was that statement. I believe it was that statement that he made just a few days, a few weeks, a few months before. I don't know how long it was. Before he went to the Potter's house, before he went all through this uh, several chapters earlier in the Bible. When he said, heal me, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. Jeremiah said, I'm fixing to come out of here. Yeah. Only hope that I have is him. The Lord is the only hope that I have. He's my only escape. Yes, Nobody here is for me. Everybody that is here, they're my enemy. Everybody that's here, they've lowered me here. Uh, and what I've said to them has put me in this place. And the only way that I'm going to be uh, healed, the only way that I'm going to be restored, the only way that I'm going to be saved is if the Lord did. You ever been in one of those circumstances? You knew that the only way that it was going to be done uh, was if the Lord did it. Uh, the banker done told you no. The lawyer done told you no. Uh, or, the, uh, or the doctor already told you no. There's no hope. There's no way out. Uh, the only way. Matter of fact, there's some that's told me, the doctor told me, said the only way way uh, that things are going to change uh, is if there's a miracle that takes place. Uh, and there I'm reminded of a song. Imagine that. Uh, it says, well, nothing but a miracle uh, will do. That's where Jeremiah was at. Uh, he said, the only thing that's going to get me out of here, uh, the only one that's going to be able to save me, uh, my help uh, cometh from the Lord. Uh, he said, I know that it's that fire that shut up in my bones. Uh, it's that profession that I made. Uh, the only way he's reminded. Uh, no doubt Jeremiah went back in his mind, in his spirit brother Wayne, uh, and said, heal me and I shall be healed, uh, save me and I shall be saved, uh, for you are my praise, uh, so it don't matter church what you're going through, uh, what you're facing uh, where you're at right now, how deep the mire of the buck is, uh, no matter if you just look around and don't see no way out, uh, seems like, seem like it's hopeless, uh, seems like it's helpless uh, and the devil said, that's right, uh, go ahead and give up, uh, that's right, go ahead and shut up, uh, that's right, quit praising, uh, that's right, quit magnifying uh, that's right, quit attending church. Uh, that's right, quit supporting the church and tithes and offering. Uh, that's right, just go ahead and quit. That's what the devil wants you to do. Because the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants you to give up. Nobody ever quit on the mountaintop. Nobody ever quit when they were proclaiming. Lord, you're my prayer. I've never seen anybody praising the Lord. tears streaming down their face. The presence of the Lord all over them on Sunday morning. And then Sunday night, they're backslid. Never seen it. Never seen it. If you've ever seen it, let me know after church. And I'll tell you that was counterfeit. I will tell you that they were back there putting ear drops, the eye drops in their eyes or something in their eyes trying to conjure up a show because they didn't no more have nothing. Because if we really feel the presence of the Lord and feel His presence, we're not going to quit the next minute. We're not going to give up the next minute. But we will 
in those times of hardship and struggle, begin to question our salvation. Yes. Yes. Amen? Yes. Yes. Anybody else ever been there? Yes. Yes. Brother Jamie, be honest with you, tell you I've been there. I've been there. I've been in that place that Jeremiah was at. I don't look at Jeremiah with judgment. I don't look at the statement because I wasn't lowered down by rags and ropes into a miry mug. There thinking, man, I'm left here to die. I couldn't see anything around me. Wondering where all my friends were gone. Wondering where my God had gone. Wondering how in the world I got here when all I've done was did, uh, preach what God told me to preach. All I've done was proclaim what God proclaimed to me to proclaim. I, I've never been in Jeremiah's place, uh, but I know that Jeremiah, if it was but just a short moment, he had a moment of weakness, but he said uh, that I will not make mention of him nor speak anymore. Don't you know all hell was rejoicing when Jeremiah made that one statement? All of hell was rejoicing. All the imps of hell and Satan, him, his very self, was standing up, uh, giving a standing ovation, saying, Wow, praise the Lord. Uh, thank God. Uh, hallelujah. They were beginning to worship. They were saying, Whoo, we got another one off the field. Yeah. Right. He said, He's not going to make mention of him no more. No more. He said, He's not going to proclaim him no more. There's nothing the devil would rather hear you say. And I'm not going to praise him no more. Right. I remember telling my dad one time, this church thing may be for you, it's not for me. And the devil rejoiced, I'm sure. Because the devil could see something that I couldn't see. See, the devil knew that God had, the devil had seen it before. He had seen somebody get on fire for God before. He seen Jeremiah and Elijah and Elisha and, and all the great prophets of old and many men from, uh, from Jeremiah, even before Jeremiah, up till the time of me. Uh, he had seen how God touched him, how God changed their life, how God did a miraculous work in their life and was beginning to mold them and to make them. He saw that and how powerful they were and how they gave the devil a fit. When I made that statement to my dad that day, I'm not going to preach. I don't even know, not even sure the Lord called me to preach. I think I might have missed it, is what I say. I'm not going to do it anymore. This is for you, it's not for me. I'm going to do it, going to do my own thing. I believe Satan rejoiced. I believe Satan was having himself a ball. But I'm so glad that along with Jeremiah, maybe it wasn't as quick as Jeremiah's was, but there came a bus. And I said, but wait a minute. But the way I said, wait a minute. I lay down on my I lay down on that bed at night after parties. There was a little wait a minute. Feel that little prayer wheel begin to turn. I didn't want to feel a prayer wheel turning. I wanted to party. I didn't want to feel a little prayer wheel turning. I didn't want to feel the preacher rising up inside of me. I didn't want to have those dreams of young people in the altar and be praying there with them. I didn't want those things. But there was something. And I know what Jeremiah was saying. There was a word of God that had already got in me. There was a word of God that was already taught in Sunday school. There was a word of God that was already preached. He raised up a child in the way they shall go when they're old. They shall not depart from it. Mama taught me. I said Mama taught me in Sunday school. Daddy had preached to me service after service. Uh, evangelist and pastor. Uh, that word of God was in there. Not, I didn't want to hear that. Uh, the word of God would come to my mind, Brother Wayne. Uh, it would begin to rise up there in that uh, midnight hour. When I begin to try to sleep, the word of God would remind me. I've called you uh, with a holy calling. Uh, I feel the presence of the Lord dealing with me. I know uh, I'm not going to do it. No, I'm not going to proclaim it. Uh, I'm not going to do it. I've seen the road that you have to go down. And I don't want it all. Hell is rejoicing. Why? Because he knew that through the preached word of God we get another preacher on fire for God. Souls were going to be saved. Yeah. Lives was going to be changed. Don't think for a minute it's just about you. A lady cornered me up one time. I was in I was backslid. And I showed up at church. Matter of fact, it was Barbara O'Neill, her son in law is the one that just died in this car wreck here a few weeks ago. A couple weeks ago. She cornered me up in the back of the fellowship hall. And she said, Brother Jamie, she said, I will still proclaim you, Brother Jamie, in faith. Exactly what she said to me. She said, you may think the decision that you've made to walk away from the Lord has affected nothing but you. She said, but you've affected others. You've affected these young people that you've taught in Sunday school. 
You've affected those that have seen you and watched you uh, pray around those altars and uh, the way that you work those altars, you've affected them. Don't think for a minute that your decision to walk away from God only affects you. I, I thought, man, if anybody could lay a guilt trip on me, this woman laid a, a guilt trip on me that night. I, those words stuck to me, stuck with me. I, I didn't come back to the Lord that night, but the words uh, stuck to me. And I believe it was those very words uh, when I heard that choir of young people sing, as I've told you before, uh, very ones that I Paul singing, take up your cross uh, and follow Jesus. Uh, that may have been a longer pause than what Jeremiah had, uh, but I said, I cannot uh, any longer uh, forbear because there's a fire uh, that's burning within me. It's like a fire shut up in my bones. Uh, it's the Word of God that's got in me. Uh, child of God, uh, backslider, no matter who you are tonight, if the Word of God's ever got in you, uh, it's going to begin to bubble up. It's going to begin to churn. Uh, it's going to begin yes. to remind you that, hey, uh, He's the only one. He's the only one worthy of your praise. He's the only one worthy of your life. And Jeremiah said, I couldn't any longer forbear. It's like a fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with weeping. Uh, 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 I was weary with weeping. I couldn't stay. I can't stay here. We may pass through that valley when we say, hey, valley, I can't stay here. There's a fire burning. That there's this time that we get down and we get out and we get discouraged. Why don't you tell discouragement? Hey, discouragement, I, I'm sorry. It hasn't been good. It hasn't been real. I got to go. I can't stay. It's a fire burning in my soul. And I've got to go to the mountaintop. Why don't you tell that valley this evening? Hey, valley, I can't stay here. I got to get to that mountaintop and just start climbing. You'll never make it up that mountain. It's too steep. It's all right. I'm going to keep on climbing. I'm coming out of here. Why don't you do that tonight? Why don't you be that child of God that says, hey, I'm not staying in this valley. I'm not waiting for some miraculous thing to take place to get me out of this valley either. I'm beginning to climb. I'm going to begin to climb this mountain. The Lord told those that as they tarried there, as they begin to compass that mountain, He said, you can pass this mountain long enough. It's time to look northward. It's time to find you a foothold. But the way he uh, preached to us on Wednesday nights, this long series on spiritual warfare, anybody remember it? Uh, he said if Satan can just get a toehold on you, uh, then he'll get a foothold on you, uh, then he'll get a stronghold on you. Uh, it's time that we just try to get us a toehold uh, on that mountain, uh, and then begin to wiggle those toes, uh, and then you can get a foothold uh, on that mountain, uh, and before you know it, you have a stronghold on that mountain. Well, what does that mean, Brother Jamie? Uh, when you've got a stronghold on that mountain, you say, hey, uh, I'm coming up out of here. I, I've got a stronghold uh, and I feel some strength uh, for climbing. Uh, my foreman said this in his song. Uh, he said, there ain't no mountain for a climber. I, I'm coming up out of this mountain. No matter what mountain stand in my way, uh, I cannot stay here. Uh, I'll get weary and I'll get worn down and I'll be defeated. Uh, but that's not what God intended for me. Uh, he's my praise. I'm going to praise Him all the way up the mountain. Yeah. I'm going to praise Him through every struggle. I'm going to praise Him through the conflict. You know what's going to happen when you begin to climb a mountain? You're going to begin to get blisters and calluses. Begin to rip your hands open, your feet open, your arms open, your legs open. Climbing is not easy. But it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth every mountain. It's worth every trial. It's worth everything. Because Jeremiah said, Lord, you are my praise. See, when He's your praise, you won't be satisfied with anything else. When He's your praise, you, you can't complain because you say, hey, I've got a reason to praise the Lord because He's my praise. Amen. He died for me on Calvary. He suffered it all, Sister Renee sings to us, because He loved me. While I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me. So I'm not going to let this get my attention and that get my attention and this distract me and that distract me because they're not the reason I praise the Lord anyway. They're not the reason that I proclaim Him. They're not my joy. They're not my peace. They're not my strength. They're not my hope. They're not my help. That's not what it's all about. He's what it's all about. He said, I, if I be lifted up. Church, he said, it's time that we begin to proclaim Him. We begin to make Him our praise. If we begin to make Him our all and our own, when we do that, we'll become His habitation. We'll become His dwelling place. Oh, the Lord loves it when we look past circumstances and say, guess what? I'm going to praise Him anyhow. Amen. Praise I told you there's two times to praise the Lord. You know those two times? When you feel like it, or when you don't. More times than not, I think we don't. 
Amen. Pray. There's many times that I wonder, is anybody going to pray the Lord? Anybody? Don't pray the Lord. Well, I don't really see where I got anything to pray to God about. I've heard people say that. I've heard people say that. We've got all the reason in the world to praise God when He's our praise. When He's our praise. Paul said, if I had hope only in this life, I'd give unto all men most people. Oh, I'd be miserable to know this is the only hope I have. And all of the good times, and all of the joy, and all the greatness that comes in life. He said, if that was my only hope, man, I'd be miserable to know this is as good as it gets. But I know it gets better than this. I know that Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again. And where you are, where I am, there you will be also. He said, before that, in my Father's house, for many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. He said that when we get there, John saw it. He said, there's a street of gold, transparent gold. Walls of jasper, gates of pearl. All the beauties of heaven, John began to explain. But the greatest thing that John explained to me is he said, there'll be no need for light in that city. For Jesus himself will be the light. It wouldn't matter to us if we got here on Sunday morning and the power was out. Because Jesus is the light of that city. It's going to be comfortable year round. Whatever temperature you like, I believe that's where it's going to be. Some might like it hot. You try to adjust the air in church, some are fan, some are freezing. Now, it doesn't matter what temperature we like, the temperature's going to be just perfect. Now, when we get over there, what a place uh, that's going to be. Paul said, if this was the only hope I had, I'd be miserable. And I've got a hope beyond the grave. I've got a hope beyond the sun, moon, and stars. I, I've got a hope that's laid up for me. I, that there's a crown of righteousness waiting for me. There's a mansion built for me. Uh, my very own. I'm not going to have any roommates. I, it's going to be all mine. The Lord's going to prepare. But he said better than all that is I'm going to be there in the presence of, of Jesus. The one who died for me. I, the one who bore it all for me. The one who did. The one that I have lived my life saying he is my praise. I'm finally going to get to see him face to face. Yeah. To look upon his face. He said, I will praise you, Lord, because thou art my praise. Psalms 42, verses 1 through 5 says, As a heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. I wish I could write like the Psalms wrote. He said, O God, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When, I, when shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night. While they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I have gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God. He had just said, Lord, I was searching for you. I was thirsting for you. My heart was panting for you. They were saying, where is your God? He said, my tears become my meat night and day. Now, what was he saying? He was saying, I was in a miserable state. Now, I wanted to feel the presence of God, but I wasn't feeling the presence of God. I, I was longing for the touch of God, but I just could not feel the touch of God. Where I was at, uh, it seemed like God was not there. Anybody ever been there? Uh, that's what the psalmist said. He said, my tears uh, have become my meat night and day. All I could do was cry. All I could do was weep because I, my heart panted for it. I longed to be in His presence. I, I longed to be in His will. I longed to be in His likeness. I, I longed to be in His image, but I just couldn't seem to get there. Anybody ever been there? I want to do right. Paul said every time I tried to do right, it seemed like evil was present with me. It seemed like every time that I turned around, sin was at the door. But I'm so thankful to know that where sin doth abound, the grace of God, there the poor does much more abound. If the psalmist here said, I wanted it and I needed it, it was my need night and day. He said, when I remember these things, I poured out my soul in me. He said, for I had gone with the multitude. I went with them where? To the house of God. I went with them to the house of God. Don't tell me we don't need church. Don't tell me we don't need church. Don't tell me Sunday morning is enough for us. Don't tell me just one service will do in a week. He said, when I went with the multitudes into the house of God. I went with them into the house of God with the voice of joy and praise. 
We can't just come into the house and say, well, I'm here. Bless me if you can. Do what you want. Say what you want. You ain't going to move me. Many people are singing that song, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. There's never been more truth to it. Amen. You couldn't move them with a crowbar. You couldn't move them if you took them up by the arm and tried to move them. They'd pull back. They'd resist. No, I don't want to be moved. I, I, don't, I want to stay right here. I want to have my pity party. I want to have uh, my woe is me, how bad I have it. And I want everybody to know how bad I've got it. Uh, that's not what the psalmist said. He said, uh, man, my heart was pained for God. I longed for God. Uh, I yearned for God. I had cried uh, until it seemed like it was my meat. The only thing that I had to eat uh, was my tears because I wanted uh, the move of God, but I wasn't experiencing the move of God where I was at. Uh, so he said, I went with the multitudes uh, into the the house of the Lord. The psalmist knew where he could experience the presence of the Lord. All the people get in that place and they say, man, I need God. I need God. I know I recognize something that's spoken to me. I've been witness to and there's something deep down inside of me. Maybe there was that word of God that was taught in Sunday school years ago. Or maybe it was a verse that somebody shared with them years gone by. And they said, my heart pants. I'm longing. I'm yearning. And I know what I'm longing and I'm yearning for. I, I used to think that my answer was going to be found in the Bible. I, I used to think that my answer was going to be found in the pill uh, or in the dope or in all these other things. Uh, but I found out, no, uh, there's one thing that I need and that's God. Uh, I reckon uh, you're ready to God to say, hey, I know this. I need to get back in church. Uh, I need God. I need God to change me. Uh, I need God to quicken me. Uh, and they also realize something else I can't find in here. You ain't going to find God in the casino. You're not going to find God in the bar room. You're not going to find God there in the house with HBO and Cinemax blaring. You're not going to find God with rock and roll blaring in your radio and country music and everything else. There's one place that you're going to find God, and that's in the house of God. He said, I went with the multitudes in the house of God, and when I did, I came with joy and with praise. Brings us back to Psalms 114. Notice, if we're going to experience Him, we've got to come out of Egypt. We've got to come out of the world. We've got to step into a place of praise and joy and say, Lord, you are my joy. You are my praise. You are my tabernacle. You are my all in my all. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Don't come with a blessing if you can. And if you come saying, I need God. And I'm going to praise him. I'm going to glorify him. He said, I entered into that house with joy and praise with a multitude that kept the holy day. He said, why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. Thomas was talking to himself. He said, why are you getting all down and out, discouraged about? Your hope is in God. Yeah. Brother Jamie can tell you. Sunday school teacher can tell you. Everybody else can tell you. And all you'll do is get mad at them. Oh, you been, don't tell me what to do. Don't you look at me and cast judgment on me. Uh, all right, you wouldn't listen to me. You wouldn't listen to the Sunday school teacher. Uh, you wouldn't listen to the other brothers and sisters that tried to encourage you in the Lord. Uh, so why don't you do what the psalmist did uh, and start talking to yourself? He said, what are you so down and out about? What are you so discouraged about? Uh, what are you whining about? What are you crying about? Uh, I found that I listen to myself better than I do anybody else. Uh, I found that I can get on myself worse than anybody else can. Uh, I am my worst critic, and I have to tell myself sometimes, uh, boy, what's your problem? Uh, there's sometimes I've got to walk in there, brother, call, look at myself in the mirror and say, boy, uh, you need to get yourself straight. Uh, you need to quit whining and complaining. Uh, you need to quit doing all those things. Uh, why don't you begin to worship God? You preach that people need to pray. Why don't you pray? You preach that people need to praise. Why don't you praise? Oh, we won't listen to nobody else. Maybe we'll listen to ourselves. That's what the psalmist said. He said, I begin to ask myself, why are you so down? Why are thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. And then he drops down in verse 11. He says this. Again. His flesh didn't get it, I guess, because he had to say it again. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou this quiet within me? Hope thou in God. For I shall praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Amen. 
You know what that is? That's the tug of war between flesh and the spirit. You're going to have to tell the flesh, hey, what are you down about? You're going to have to tell the flesh, hey, what are you complaining about? Your hopes in God. Said flesh, get out of the way because I'm fixing to praise God. And flesh, when I begin to praise God, guess what? You're going with me. When my spirit begins to run around this church, guess what, flesh? You're going to be the one that chauffeurs us. Yeah. Whether you want to or not, the spirit says go, I'm going. Yeah. If the spirit says move, I'm moving. Flesh, whether you want to or not, whether you say, oh, no, I want to have a pity party. Flesh wants to say, no, I want to sit right here and I want everybody to know how bad I got. And the spirit tells the flesh, listen up, flesh. It's time to quit having a pity party. It's time to quit saying, woe is me. It's time for you to quit being this white. It's time for you to, be, to stop being cast down. He said, what are you cast down for anyway? Your hope is God. If God's your praise, you don't have no reason to be down and out. We don't have no reason to walk around like we just sucked on a limit. We don't have no reason to walk around like that we just lost our best friend. But we have to lift up our head and say, he's my praise. He's my all in my all. And he ended this verse with saying, who is the health of my countenance and my God. And my God. Is he your God tonight? Has he become your everything? When he's become our everything, nothing else really matters. Nothing else adds up to anything. Things will come and they'll try to get us down. Even the best of men such as Jeremiah got down discouraged, got down on themselves. But I can't do it anymore. I can't go on. We get there from time to time. We better get over that real quick. Say, no, Lord. You're my friends. I repent. I repent. Forgive me. I'm going forward. You're my friends. Stand with me all over this house. Sister Debbie, you're my friends. Say, why thou cast down Oh my soul? While thou disquieted within me, hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him. No matter how you feel tonight, no matter what this flesh feels like, your soul may be discouraged. You may have discouragement that you're facing right now. Why don't you feel that discouragement? Uh, Mr. Discouragement, you've been poor company. And I cannot stay. Amen. Why don't you tell that depression, depression? I've had not a good time at your house. And I've got to go. It's not very nice for us to leave somebody's house and say, hey, I didn't have fun at your house. I'm leaving. That wouldn't be very nice to do. But it's all right to do it. The discouragement, depression, oppression, all those things that's trying to bind you and hold you. Say, hey, let me go. I got to go. I'm coming up out of here. I'm coming up out of here. You're not holding me back any longer because more than ever before, I realize it's all about Jesus. He's my praise. I'm his dwelling place. He wants to dwell in me. He wants to fill me up. He's concerned with what concerns me. He wants me to be the temple that he dwells in. He wants me to be his life to a dark world. He told me that I am the salt of the earth. That I am the light of the world. Jeremiah, not many verses later, Jeremiah 29, 11, he reminds the people of what the Lord said, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Lord, you're my praise. Is he your praise tonight? Is he your praise? And come up out of that funk that you're in. Leave depression behind. Leave those things that's binding you and hindering you, those addictions, those things that prevent you, whether it's sin or not. He said, lay aside every weight of sin, which does so easily beset you. There's some things weighing you down, holding you back. 
There's things that's so heavy on your mind that you can't lift your hands. Wholeheartedly and honestly, praise God. You need to shake loose from that, friend. You need to make him your friends. Say, hey, I'm living for Jesus. I don't care what the flesh says, what the devil says, or anybody else says. He's my friends. Jeremiah said, if I'm going to be healed, it's because you healed me. If I'm going to be saved, it's because you saved me. For thou art my friends. I see your praise tonight. Praise him. Lift your hands all over this house. And just begin to praise him. As you've got those hands up, just let him take your way out from that seat. Just gather around these altars tonight. Let, let's don't bow. Let's just come with hands raised around these altars tonight. Say, Lord, you are my praise. Just forget about those problems. If just for a moment. Just forget about those struggles. If just for a moment. Uh, forget about that sickness. If just for a moment. Uh, and see what God will do for you around these altars. When you come say, Lord, I, I'm not worried about So why are you disquieted within me? Uh, so why are you cast down? Uh, I'm just going to praise the Lord. Uh, I'm just going to magnify Him. Uh, I'm just going to take time uh, and praise Him. For He is my all and my all. I'm going to praise the Lord. I don't know what my neighbor is going to do. I don't know what my spouse is going to do, but I know what I'm going to do. I know this flesh don't want to, but I'm going to praise the Lord. Come on. All over this house, begin to make your way around these altars. Just come around to the other side of the altar, too. And give everybody plenty of room to gather around these altars. You can come right around the front here. There's plenty of room around the front on both sides. Oh, 100% tonight. To be your praise tonight. Come with hands lifted. You are my praise. I know circumstances want you to say, No, I'm not coming. I'm not lifting my hand. I don't feel like it. And you can't make me. I'm not going to try to make you. It's up to you. Say, Lord, you're my praise. You got to begin to talk to yourself tonight. You gotta begin to talk to the Lord, you gotta begin to talk to yourself. Say, Self, it's time for you to praise God. Self, it's time for you to get over yourself. Praise the Lord. Self, it's time for you to quit saying to me and I. And begin to say, Him. He is worthy of all praise. He's my praise. I'll come on, praise Him, church. Praise Him, church. Let the neighbors hear you praise Him tonight. From the top of your voice, from the depths of your heart and your soul, just begin to praise Him. Just begin to praise Him. Just begin to get lost in the presence of the sweet Spirit of God. Oh, little God, I praise You. I praise You, Lord, I praise You. Oh, you have us to praise His people. Oh, when we begin to praise Him, He makes us His dwelling place. When we begin to praise Him, He said, that's where I'm welcome. When we begin to praise Him, He said, that's somebody that wants me to abide in them. That's somebody that wants me and has invited me to take full control of their vessel. That's what I'm going to dwell in. Just praise Him, church. His presence. What we long for, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. I long for you in a dry and barren land. Be as a song as my heart panted for thee, O oh Lord. Oh, I panted for you, dear Lord. I long for you, my thirsting soul needs you, O oh Lord. Oh, I know and recognize and realize that I need you, O oh Lord. I'll praise you. Praise you, the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmness of His power. Praise Him in His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him for the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him for the song of the heart. Praise Him for the tune of the dance. Praise Him for the string instruments and organs. Praise Him for the loud sounding cymbals. Praise Him for the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, lift up those holy hands. Magnify His name. Worship Him. You are my praise. I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm going to praise the Lord.
anybody else is going to do tonight. Just make up your mind. I'm going to enter into the presence of the Lord. I'm going to forget about myself. I'm going to concentrate on Him. Praise. 